Hey everybody, this is Tom with Rocket Restorations and this morning is McHacken 2024. I can't tell you how excited I've been. I always look forward to this every year and we did a preview episode yesterday for move-in day where everything was kind of all over the place but now is where the real magic happens. So the public doesn't come in until 9 so we get a uh, insider view at 8 a.m. without the huge crowds so you can go through and see all the displays. This is really the best chance to see everything because there isn't like a million people in here right now. That's cool. Original owner Shelby GT350 Ford drag truck. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of a, I don't know if it's going to be a one take, but basically just a tour around the show. It's like a George Barris custom Hot Wheels come to life. The fuzz. Royal Pontiac. That's cool. Royal Bobcat. You were like the Yanko of Pontiacs. That's a cool display. So the the feature car this year is the GTO, and there's a lot of really cool GTOs here. The Tin Indian. As I said, if uh, I've said this a lot, but if it wasn't into Mopars, it'd probably be Pontiacs. I like Pontiacs. As seen on Jay Little's garage. Yeah, so the this is kind of the red carpet right here, 60th anniversary of the GTO. So they, they kind of rotate it every year. So it's GM, then it's Mopar, and then it's Ford. They had Shelby, uh, they had 429s last year. Uh, 1970 GTO Judge, Ram R4 four speed, convertible. I think there's seven of these here. Uh, owner's Wade's Ogle, he's a really good dude out of the Bay Area. He's got a pretty high end collection. Of, he's got Mopars and GTOs and a little bit of everything, but he's a really good dude. Yeah, so these GTOs, these are all very expensive Ram Air 4 convertibles. And then, yeah, if you guys got any questions about McCacken, please put them in the comments. I'm going to kind of just give you a quick tour of the show. Like, I'm not going to go super in-depth on everything, because I just want to kind of cover the whole area here just so you can see everything. 74 GTO, those are kind of neat. They uh, helped uh, my aunt, uh, his brother had like five of these things or something like that. I helped him with the estate a couple years ago. Kind of like them, they're kind of neat. Cheetahs, these are cool. These were like basically two frame race cars. They were really, really fast because they didn't really weigh anything. Huge. Chevy Motors and old school overachiever. Yeah, these things are neat. So there's different displays. Everything's got a theme. The GTO Judge Invitational. So there's like one of every generation of GTO. Claremont Collections Auto Museum. That's cool. Montauk Barracuda. Those are Super Duties, 69 340 Dart, Cougar, Cobra Jet, SS Chevelle, 455 HO, GTO Joe, Jim Leets El Mallow. I love the hand painting on that, that's cool. Still setting up. Didn't quite finish last night. There's a bunch of wing uh, fin cars. 58 DeSoto Fire Sweep convertible. Man, what a amazing car. First year of the big block. Those don't know the big block started out as a 350. Really? Yep. Chevy didn't have the 350 first. Mopar did. So it's basically a 383 base block. Well. The 33 is based on the 350 block. That's probably a better way to put it. 59 Custom Royal Lancer Convertible. Super D500. I think that's the dual quad motor. Yeah. Dual fours. F Convertible in Terador Red. 
I don't know. I think this is this and the 1961 300G. I just think are the best design Chrysler's ever. They just. I mean, obviously, I love the 68, 69, 70 Charger, but there's just something about the fin cars that are just amazing. Okay, let's go down the road here. So, Boss 429s. So, Boss 429s was actually the Invitational last year. So, these are for Pinnacle certifications. So they're getting judged. Race cars over here. So then they do the, the judging. So the Ford one's called Pinnacle Certification and you gotta have a lift to judge them. Okay, here's a... So this is, I think Kramer's putting this one on, but it's factory race cars. But 64 race Hemi. These have aluminum fenders, doors, these are amazing. Like, you close the doors on these things. I'm not getting near this car because the fenders and doors are about the, the width of a tin can. But, like, you close the doors on these. They have, like, Lexan glass. Like, they're so light. They did everything they could to reduce weight on these things. Uh, we did one at Rocket years ago for uh, my friend Dick Ross, who runs Firm Field. Super cool car. Oh, this is one of the Hemi hardtops. So, this is an interesting part of Mopar. Oh, no, it's his Max Wedge. Never mind. It's a Max Wedge car. This is kind of the last of the Max Wedge. Once the Hemi came out, the, they dropped the Max Wedge because it wasn't really necessary anymore because they had the Hemi. Dave Wise report on that one. Zinz Master Chevrolet, aluminum fenders, please do not lean. 409, installs the window sticker, that's neat. 64 Dodge 330. So that's one of the Hemi cars they built 55 Dodges and 55 Plymouths. There's kind of the story on it, that's cool. So he had a 63 with the Max Wedge, and then he sold it to, to get this one. That's neat. These are amazing cars, like what they had to put into these. The effort, you know, stamping the aluminum just to make them competitive. Cross Ram Race Hemi in there. And of course the Plymouth version. Hands off aluminum. It's a really rare air cleaner for the cross ram. It's kind of a chrome piece. 65 is a little bit different. I love the candy paint on this. This is Jim Kramer's car. Last painted in 68. Originally Dave Stricker and Bill Jenkins' Dodge Boys car. That's cool. So Jim Kramer's a big kind of race car collector. See they got a Hemi display over here, although everything's tarped up, which is annoying. Yeah, they actually deleted the inner headlights on these things too. 63 aluminum car. Uh, Jamie at Dead Dodge Garage just did a, a feature on a high compression Max Wedge car that was a steel nose, but late in the year they came out with the aluminum nose just to make them that much lighter. Torque flight by Godry's. The high and mighty. Another aluminum car, race Hemi. Those are cool. I just picked up two race Hemi blocks in California. Still trying to figure out what to do with them. Pontiac, aluminum Chevy, Tempest Wagon. Super Duty aluminum. I think these are all aluminum cars. I think that's the theme here. the Chevy mystery motor so it's it's really amazing the amount of money that they put into NASCAR in this era I mean like yeah they have all the aluminum drag cars they're obviously wanted, wanted to win the drag car races but most of that came from NASCAR like the Hemi would not have been built if it were not for NASCAR the Chevy quote-unquote mystery motor would not have been built for NASCAR it was built to compete in that they built the first few and they didn't really last in NASCAR but you know, that's kind of where the big block Chevy came from. Aluminum Can-Am Chevy block. That's cool. AMX 390. Oh, that's the show motor. That's cool. 427 Ford. McLaren and 
engine, supercharged Hemi. Wish the stuff wouldn't be tarped up. I'm gonna have to go over and look at this stuff later. A D5 426 Hemi, Tom Hoover design. Dual plug. Yeah, that's fun stuff there. I don't know what that is. It's a USAC midget aluminum four. I've never even heard of that before. Long ram motor. Talked about that a lot in the channel. So it's kind of interesting is this is not put together very correctly. So those are the wrong exhaust manifolds. Those manifolds are for the short ram setup for the 63 uh, 300J, and it was optional on the 64 300K. Um, most of the 300Ks got four barrels, but it was optional. Um, and these are what are called long ram manifolds. So the divider goes all the way across. If it was a short ram motor, it, it's only halfway across. You actually got more top end power out of that. Um, but it's kind of an interesting display. It's advertised as a 6061, but I said those exhaust manifolds are right for 6364. 5253 Chrysler 331 overhead cam. Huh. That's kind of cool. Somebody signed it. Interesting. I've never heard of that before. And here's a NASCAR Hemi. Assembled for 1970 Daytona race. Built at Chrysler. Rare intake reverse tow ram. Interesting. Yeah, they never ran, I think they, owned by Steve Atwell. He's a good dude, he's a big Hemi guy. He's got a huge collection of Hemi stuff. I think the only year they could run a dual quad was 68. They were doing all sorts of experimentation, like Ford got ahead, Chrysler got ahead, so they'd reduce the horsepower on the Chrysler and they reduced the horsepower on the Ford. They were trying to make it all even and it just ended up being a giant mess. But they actually could run dual, dual quads for a bit in 68, but I think that's the only time they could ever run dual quads in NASCAR. Symbol for the 70 Daytona race. They definitely didn't run dual quads at the 70 Daytona. That's when the wing cars were out and NASCAR was on the warpath. They didn't want that stuff. They wanted stock. Sunco Trans Am car, that's cool. 350 SS Camaro. Yanko Turbo Z. GM stuff over there. 65 Fury. GT500 King of the Road. The thing is, like, I mean, I realize I'm a Mopar homer. Like, that's what this channel is. If you're watching this channel, you're probably a Mopar guy, but like, one of those never beat a Hemi on the street or in the drag race. Okay, this is cool. So this is the black and white formal collection. This is a collection that Dan Pausch put together for the show. So they're all black with white interior cars. Some pretty cool cars here. Black Daytona, six pack Challenger, six pack Cuda. Another six pack Cuda, those are kind of twins. 1970 Sport Fury GT, Bill Hansley's car. Here's the A12 Invitational here too. So if you don't know, the A12 car was a special drag race package they made in 1969. So they took, a, it was the first 446 pack or six barrel on the Plymouth. They all had steel wheels with chrome lug nuts and lift off hoods and they all had 410 Dana Marins and 15 by six wheels with huge tires on them. What a cool package. 67 Cornet RT, four speed, I mean. Another Hemi car. Another Hemi car. An official unveiling. I think this is the well-worn Invitational. I don't remember right. Beautiful A12 cars. That one's got some cool patina. It still has the window sticker on it. Cool. Blue Mancini. So Mancini Racing is the sponsor of this one. They're a uh, Reproduction Parts House in Michigan. Yeah, 
black paints. And soon he's got all the stuff. All the good stuff. Flash, duster race car. So this is kind of the restoration guys area. So the, some of the higher end shops have booths here and they're revealing their new restorations. Shelby, the Hearst Linda Vaughn Grand Prix. That's cool. I'm gonna ask Trev if that's a clone or if that's the real deal or not. Here's the Meekum booth. So they're showing a bunch of cars. They're gonna be at Kissimmee. They're a big sponsor of the show. It's the Mod Squad Challenger. Twister Special Mach 1. Looks like a Nomad, probably 57 Chevy. They had a way bigger booth last year. It's interesting that they're not bringing as much this year. Wing car, Richard Petty owned at some point. I don't know, I've never been a guy where it's Jones celebrity cars. I mean, I know it makes them worth more, but it's just, if I bought that car, it's always Richard's car. It'd never be my car. You know what I mean? I think Jay Leno said that. I heard him say that once and it was like, it kind of made sense. <laughs> it's like, once it's a, once it's a Petty's car, it's always Petty's car. It's never going to be your car. This is Apex Restorations here, Magnum Restorations. That's the Hurricane Superbird right there. They're going to unveil that. I think they're like 1020 today. I'll come over for that. I'm good friends with those guys. They're good dudes. The Nikki Booth. He's now one of the big sponsors of the show. All the restoration shops, Troy Angeli Restorations, the PM Collection. I don't know what the PM is. ECS Automotive. They make reproduction stickers, like the the door VIN stickers and stuff. They make exhaust. Okay, these are kind of cool. This is the Joe Dirt car. And then there's a Superbird. Dress up like the Joker car. It's Mopar's 5150 production. They bought that at auction for a ton of money last year. A lot of money last year. This is the two lane blacktop 55 Chevy. Of course, an American graffiti as well. It's a cool car that cars had a lasting impact on a lot of car people over the years. Charger with the Hellcat. Finer details restoration shop. 72 Demon. That's beautiful. Superbird. What does a Toyota get in here? Toyota Crown 2600. I don't know what the deal is on that. Everyone to a crown. I don't know. Oh, this is military. Salute to our military. Interesting. These must be all military members who have their cards in the show. So pretty much everything's got a theme. Corvettes. Charger. 70 Roadrunner. pilot car that's cool it's a real early production you see so a lot of real early cars were built white because you know if you ever see the parts book you know they have pictures of the cars in the parts books obviously well they use white cars because they're black and white so you can actually see them 340 demon these are neat cars they're pure stock muscle cars so they're like restored like original with polyglass tires and everything and Buy spy tires and it goes as fast as they can. This runs 13 nines on the old tires. 
old skinny tires. This is Gilmore Museum car. I've never been there, that's an awesome museum. It's in Michigan. I had a great opportunity to go to their show a few years ago. It was really, really neat. The museum's amazing. It's in, it's in kind of central Michigan. Wow. So that's a, the, the stock muscle cars, but it's like a Survivor AAR. That's cool. Heavy Charger. 26. Wow, that's, that's moving. Right, this is mostly Corvettes over here. Corvettes. Vintage certifications over here. It's an old Indy car, that's cool. BMCs. Studebakers. Lots of Studebakers. And some more Mopars over there. I'll go back out that way. That's cool. Four speed, 300 convertible. It's not an L though, it's a regular 300, but convertible four speed. 440 GTX. So a lot of the cars over here are local Chicago Mopar Club members, so they. They help out a lot with the show on setup day, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So they, they always have a display of their cars here. There's always kind of an interesting variety. It's not just you know Hemi cars and stuff. Alright, the vintage certification area is over here. So this is testing for you know original untouched cars. They had some pretty impressive cars over here yesterday. I actually took a video of this challenger, so keep an eye on my channel the next week or two. I did a kind of a deep dive into this convertible, but not to bury the lead, but it's a 344 speed AC car, which is pretty neat. There's just all makes over here. I'm interested in the Mopar stuff. It, Hemi's got 3,900 miles on it. Pretty impressive. Survivor 72 Duster back there. Street Man. So they have like these seminars. I don't know how to subscribe them. They have like, you know, experts and people talking about topics up here on the stage. It's pretty cool. They got the Meekin guys up there. There's Bob Ashton. Bob is basically the, what's the best word for it? The, kind of the showrunner. He's in kind of charge of putting this together and he does an amazing job putting this all together. It is, the scale of this is crazy. Vista Cruiser. Love the wood. Wow, 19,000 miles max wedge. That's really cool. 62 Sport Fury max wedge convertible. Wow. I'm gonna have to go back and get some video of that. Turn me loose. Yes, I think this is the Chicago Mopar Club over here. TA Super. The Dodge that shouldn't exist. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting car. This kind of guy bought this a couple years ago and kind of made the rounds. Everybody thought, oh, this car can't exist, but Mr. Norms made a special run. So on 66, obviously the 426 Hemi came out, but this car actually has a 426 wedge motor in it in 66. So it was a special order from the factory, so they, I'm sure they had some leftover 65 motors. And no one's really quite sure how many they made. Um, it's kind of a bit of a controversy how many they made. Um, my guess is, you know, they, they had to buy a certain number for Chrysler to make this. They weren't just gonna make one of these. They had to be custom made um, on the assembly line. It wasn't just a factory option. So I'm guessing Mr. Norms bought at least 25 to 50 of these. I could be wrong about that, but there is a couple more of these known, but it was in the barn find sections. That's that's another thing that's really cool about the show. You can see these things in the barn find sections and then see them restored a few years later. It was raced under the Gentle Ben livery, but cool car, 426 wedge, four speed. It's just his Cornette and it's absolutely documented. It's absolutely original. There's broadcast sheets and documentation. So never say never with Mopar. It should be a 426 Hemi, but it's a 426 wedge. He's got nice tables out here for people to sit at because, man, you put a lot of miles on your feet at this show. Ooh, Bengal Charger. These are cool. 
These are special order paint 68 chargers that were ordered in the Cincinnati dealer region for you know the Bengals. Because orange is not a color that year. We may have to come back and get more video of that because that's a really cool car. Always been fascinated by the history on those. Judges are already out judging. They're still getting signs up and stuff. Let's do the Baker Legends. As I said, they let the general public gets in at nine. If you're a presenter or you know, you have a media pass like some of us, you uh, can get in at eight. Kind of a cool entire collection. Mid American Motor Works with that company. Vintage neon and signs. Pretty crazy to me what they're getting for those. I mean, I know what neon costs. It's not cheap. All right, this is a little more flushed out than from yesterday. So this is the famous barn find section. So last year they had so many cars that kind of spilled over into other areas. This year everything's where it should be in this little area. These are all Mopar's 5150 cars. Drag race Cuda. That's cool. Daytona, 69 Charger RT, 68 Charger RT, 444 speed. That one came from Washington actually, which is kind of cool. Six barrel Cuda, TA, six pack, 70 Hemi Cuda, Panther Pink 70 Cornet. That's Ryan Brute over there. He's the guy behind the barn find section. He's done books and videos and all sorts of stuff. The auto archeologists. The heavy Chevy that couldn't stop. Y88 Trans Am package. That almost looks too nice, the barn find section. 70 Cornet RT. These are really rare cars. They just didn't make that many of them. Convertibles were really on the way out by 1970. Not very people ordered them. Purse 72 Pontiac. Grand Prix. Every time we see one of these, I don't know, the noses just look weird on them. Machine. Mercury Cyclone. Jimmy Cornet Convertible. California plates on it. That's good. Cool. Silver metallic with red top and red stripe. Very cool. Let's see how you get over here. These are some of the more custom builds over here. A lot of resto mod stuff. I try to have a little bit of everything in the show to be representative of you know what you see in the hobby. Swap meet display area over here. Pontiac Fiero. Fiero GT. Mm. And swap meet area is over here. You can be able to run through that. Let's see, most of the stuff's covered up, but there's some neat displays over here too. Minivan. I think they'll be having shows for these in 50 years. SRT. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, everything's covered up over here. There's always a Chevy guy. He's always got some really neat race parts. There's Jim Reinhardt. He's a friend of mine. I've known him forever. Chicago legend. Is legend the right word? Notorious. Swap meet over here. A bunch of Trans Am cars. It's a uh, friend Scott's booth. He's a Mopar guy. Here's some Mopar parts. No one's tail end lenses. I'll come back over here later and look at the stuff. Looks expensive. Toy cars, and I mean, it's not like. 
lot of these swamis just have like weird stuff. They have like, ooh, Chrysler sign. Three, two, maybe five. Dang. I kind of want that. I'm just gonna picture my brother. I don't think I have that one. I don't know if I've run enough cash, and I don't know how I'm supposed to get that on the plane, but it's never stopped me before. All right, what do we got over here? More sweet stuff. High school reunions. These are all cars that these guys had in high school. Uh, 440 Barracuda. That is a big supercharger on a 71 Charger. Yeah, these M Code Cudas are really cool cars. A 72 Challenger. Barracuda. Of course, the Cuda got the blackout on the tail panel. The Barracuda and Grand, well, Grand Cuda was silver, I think. Yeah, the base Barracuda instead of painted tail panel. This is kind of goofy because you always see the the blacked out panels. It always looks a little better. TA love plate frames. The No Miller Dodge City, very cool. RTSE. Those pictures of the dealership. I love the old dealers, old signs and stuff. friend Dave's convertible. 340 convertible he's had since high school. Dave's a good dude. He he's got his he's, he's kind of famous for buying a for like a brand new vehicle and having like no miles on it. He had a I can't remember it was like a 2000 Dodge truck that had like 20,000 miles on it. So we need to get all this GM stuff. Sketchy, sketchy. Jack's car care products. Back to cars. Yeah, nice little reunion. 73 Barracuda. 69 Roadrunner. CB. 70 Charger 500, my favorite. This is my first Mopar. Uh, 383 two barrel burnt orange car. Always like the 70 Chargers. Well, Encode, that's cool. Another 70 Charger. I like these because they're not RTs. Another Encode 500. 70B. There's an assortment of VW performance parts. I had a little supercharger for one of these things recently. It's kind of neat. I think these are the young gun things, I think. A little Brooklyn sign. That's cool. Not sure what the hay is for on the GT350R coupe. We need some more blue. meat stuff. Socks and Martin Superbird, VIP Car Corral. So let's play the fun game if they actually post a price or not. Most of them don't, which is really annoying. Like, if you're gonna bring a car to a car show, try to sell it, put a price on it. Come on, like, it's not a game. If you want to sell it, sell it. Super B. And keep in mind, like I say that, but some of these guys may put a price on here once they actually get here. A lot of these guys aren't here yet. That's cool. Love that brick one sign. 68 Dart offered for sale. Four tennis Hemi. It's had some pretty serious custom work done to it. Cuda. It's gonna be Challenger. So yeah, these are all for sale. There's no price on them. Hopefully they do that later. All right, here's a kid area. So bring your kids here. There's some 
they got a lot of kids activities like Hot Wheels and kid programs and a lot of neat stuff like that. It's just a charger. Mini bike area. Bob, the guy in this is really into that. Oh, that's cool. The go-kart van. I thoroughly approve. Kind of want one of those. Captain Kangaroo says Schwinn bikes are the best. Captain Kangaroo wouldn't lie to you, would he? The cotton picker. Those are kind of cool. All right, well, there's kind of one lap of Macaquin. We'll uh, get some more footage of stuff. There's some unveils and a bunch of other stuff like that going on soon. So we'll get some more footage of that. But just kind of wanted to give you one kind of general lap of the show. Just so you can kind of enjoy it just like I did. And uh, we'll have more later. I hit the section earlier, but uh, I didn't realize what it was. It's the history of the 426 Hemi. So it goes all the way from the start down there, all the way down to the California Flash Duster that still had a Hemi in it. That's kind of neat. Dick Landy's car. Interesting collection of stuff. All right, I want to go back over these race engines because they're all covered up when I was here last, but this is cool. So it's a 65... 65? Yeah, 69. 65... 8990 race motor that is cool so what's interesting on these race motors is the heads are actually different so they're straight right there on the street hemi motors there's a little angle to it that's how you can tell if it's a race hemi head or a street hemi head cross ram love that intake air cleaner aluminum fan lightweight clutch Look at those pulleys, they're beefy. I think those are off like big trucks or something, I think. Racing pictures, the exhaust is cool. So they're cast iron headers. How cool is that? And they had uh, you know, side pipes they could unplug. So it'd be straight, straight exhaust. Open. Six pack Hemi intake. That's cool. They reproduced those in the for more performance in the 90s, but they didn't need a repo. That's an original one. Hemi cutaway. Check out our special parts display. That's cool. Yeah, Jim Kramer, he's been kind of a race Hemi Max Wedge guy for years. He's got a pretty impressive collection of stuff. These are aluminum Hemi heads. Extremely modified for flow, water tested okay, A148 head, these are cool, these alone heads are really neat, cross ram, all chromed, that would look great on my chrome big block engine, so cross rams but like kind of custom made cross rams, interesting, not sure what they were doing there. Or dual plug boss. Max wedge motor there. Love those exhaust manifolds. It's sweepy. Oh, it's four carburetor. That might be overkill. I'm just just saying. One of one intake built for bon Bonneville. That's cool. There's the bolt in for the max wedge. Super cool. Chevy stuff. So I'm going to do a separate video on these because I think these are really, really neat and it's a good buddy of mine, Dan Pausch, making these. Um, but this is a, the, I know I keep on showing this car because I love it so much. It's my buddy Bill's car. So it's a black and white formal tire imitational um, with the black and white. But Dan actually made these custom boards for the show. But he actually makes these, you know, they won't have the black and white formal on them, but he actually does these decos and I think they're really, really amazing. So Dan Pausch, a uh, good friend of mine lives in Vegas. We started, um, you know, doing numbers and Fender Tag stuff together like years ago. Dan's been doing this since the 80s. I, mean, I was too young to be gathering Fender Tag information then, but he's been really into this. But, you know, Dan has like this huge registry of cars and all this information. He makes these boards and they're just, they're really, really neat. Um, 
I said, I'm going to do like a deep dive into these, like all the boards here and your decodes and everything. But uh, I just wanted to advertise Dan a little bit here. There's just emails. It, but I'm going to do a... I'm gonna do a separate video on these two, but if you wanna order one of these boards for your car, I think they're really, really neat. He does, it's all the production numbers and how many they made of each option, and it's really neat information, but uh, his email is dhead68 at hotmail.com if you wanna order one of these from him. I need stuff in this booth. Everybody's got a shaker base, six pack base, air grabber, max wedge manifold. Lots of cool stuff. Over here is Great Lakes. Mopar, he uh, always has some good stuff. His prices are uh, high. That uh, 70 Super Retail Lights, $600. But he's got the stuff. Remember when I mentioned that I wanted to get video before the crowds came? Yeah, there's a lot of people here on Saturday barn find section you can hardly get through here it's so packed full of people it just shows you how popular the show is becoming this cool pink cornet i was gonna do a video of this yesterday but i thought it was not gotta be able to show the thunder tag so fm3 Electric panther pink with white interior i'm gonna own a panther pink car one of these days I've had a couple of dusters I've tried to buy and it just hasn't worked out. One of these days, maybe one of my daughter's driving age. I think I quite appreciated what this was yesterday. This is a Tri-Power Pontiac wagon with eight lug wheels. That's kind of cool. Full-size muscles in my bag. Wow, console too. Console tack. That's super cool. Safari 421 Tri-Power. The other nice part about uh, Pontiac is Pontiac Historic Society has all the docks for it, so it's really easy to document these cars. Jack Winker Motors, Hondo, Texas. Yep, you verify all the options on these. I mean, I'm thirsty, but I'm not that thirsty. So, do you think TSA will let me take these through security? What do you think? I only have a check on. These are some beautiful C-body NOS lower control arms. I bought these in a dealership in Michigan, and my good friend Dave was super nice to go pick them up for me. He delivered to the McCacken, and now I gotta get them home. Didn't really wanna ship them because they're big and bulky. Those are gorgeous pieces of machinery. See the uh, Cosmoline on them? Super, super cool. I'm not even sure why I bought them. You know, sometimes I just buy stuff to buy stuff because they're super cool and it's a really good reference for uh, doing a restoration on a control arm because this is an NOS one. This is exactly how the factory did it. I tried to be here for the reveal today, but I just missed it. This is a uh, Magnum Auto restoration. This is actually the Hurricane Superbird. Here are the parts that came out of it. Yeah, salt is not good for gauges and metal and radio and pretty much anything else. Beautiful restoration. They always do a good job. This is cool. At a friend's place for a party after hours. 426 Hemi. Love it. All right. It's 1 a.m. Back to my hotel room. Went to a fun party tonight. Watching the F1 race in Vegas. There'll be a few more videos coming up with a few of the individual cars from the show. Um, so thanks everybody for watching. This is Tom from Rocket Restorations. We'll talk to you soon.